All right, welcome to the uh, regular uh, meeting of the Easton Planning and Zoning Board, um, Monday, February 12th. Uh, this is a hybrid meeting, and we have a few hybrid meeting procedures. Uh, the meeting will be conducted in person and remotely over Zoom. Attendance by planning board members may be in person or remote, and both types of attendance shall count towards quorum. This meeting may be broadcast live and recorded on ECAT, which it is. To use Zoom, you will need to use the link on the agenda or download the Zoom application at zoom.us and create an account or use one of the call-in numbers listed on the agenda. You will need the webinar ID to join by phone only. While conducting hybrid meetings, we will we'll endeavor to keep meeting operations as close to standard procedures as possible. However, use of the remote platform will necessitate some additional meeting protocols. While the board members or commissioners and applicants will be on video and audio, Public participants invited to speak by the chair will be in person, on video, or on audio. Public participants joining by Zoom will be muted and with no video feed from them. Public lines will be muted throughout the meeting to allow the board to conduct business and to eliminate background noise. For general meetings and only for items under which the chair solicits public comment, members of the public participating in the Zoom meeting may submit a written question via the text chat provided they include their full name and address for the public record. Members of the public viewing their meeting on ECAT may submit questions in writing via email to um, the planning department. The chair reserves the right to respond to questions during the live meeting, but may limit the time for such activities. Any questions not addressed in the meeting may be answered afterwards via email and will be incorporated into the minutes of the meeting for the public record. Um, a few additional um, instructions can be found on page two of the agenda, which is posted on the town meeting website um, under the calendar. Um, so now we will start with a roll call. Uh, Wolf? Present. Uh, Deshane present. Stetson? Present. Kadem? Present. And Zygmunt, are you here yet? Do, nope. You don't see her in participants? Zygmunt is no. not present um, yeah. in the remote attendance yet, but we'll start, um, we'll start up at the beginning of the agenda. Internally illuminated sign, 594 Washington Street, Papagino sign, viewpoint sign, and awning. I see Bart, and I think he's unmuted, but you can't see him. Yes, good, uh, good, good evening. Am I, am I all set to go? Yes. Okay, I don't know if you okay, can see me or not. Presentation. Um, well, we can't see you right now, just uh, so for now you could uh, state your name and address. For the okay, record, very, very good. My name is Bart Steele. I'm with Viewpoint Sign and Awning in Northboro, Massachusetts, and I'm here representing Papa Gino's. Uh, which you folks know uh, located at 594 Washington Street uh, in the Plymouth Crossing Plaza. Our application is very simple tonight. Um, we have a rather large internally illuminating awning. Um, it was over 200 square feet at the plaza now, and they are interested in removing that pre-existing non-conforming structure off the building and replacing it with a simple set of LED illuminated channel letters on a raceway uh, on the gable. And you should have, I'm looking at the rendering that you have, you folks have. So once that awning's gone, you'll see the brick um, up on the facade. That's, that's what's underneath that awning now. And the set of letters that we're proposing there are white channel letters, uh, 29 and 3 eighths inches high. 88 and three quarter inches wide, total square footage of only 18.1 square feet, which is approximately 200 square feet less than the existing uh, display now. Um, this, uh, I've heard from Papaginos that they're going to illuminate this sign only from dusk to 9.45. And um, this is their logo that they're currently using at their new locations at all of their locations. So they're trying to get this um, location more contemporary with what they're doing at their other facilities. In addition to that, they obviously have a spot on the pylon sign. And uh, currently it says Papa Gino's Pizzeria. There's a uh, before picture there and you see the replacement face afterwards. It's uh, we're taking off the secondary copy about uh, takeout and deliver and just sticking with the logo only. And again, this is refacing the existing sign 
in the in the existing structure. And I think that that's about it, unless the board has questions. Okay, thank you, Adam. So the, the, the second sign you discussed, the freestanding sign, that's illuminated um, like a Lexan? Uh, yes, that's 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 an eternally illuminated pylon sign, and we're replacing the, the, the panels in it. Okay, thanks, Adam. Lexan panel or dyno. Um, I just have a question, because <clears throat> the, the photo that shows the existing sign also shows the awning going completely across and where um is, i'm sorry was it mark bart bart, bart um, mentioned that the brick that's shown here will be exposed but it also looks like there's a break in the awning and an arch over the door i, I mean yes, it's a curiosity question more than anything yeah, if that is that is consistent with, I did provide the board with a uh, picture of um, the other gable that's not covered with an awning. Uh, that was in one of the uh, pieces of information I sent to Suzanne. I don't know if you have that there, but um, yeah, once that awning's gone, that's what it looks like underneath it. Okay. So the on all our drawings, we always put it the existing condition so you can see the unit that's there now. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the main purpose of the drawing is to show you what the proposed unit is. I mean, I, I think it, in addition to the sign being updated, it also makes the end. If that's the case and they're exposing that entranceway, it certainly is more attractive. Yeah. Board members? Yeah, that's the that on it, yes. Yeah, it looks better. There's Joanne. Okay, uh, just for the record here, Joanne has joined. Hello, Jana. Joanne, are you present? Yes. I am, yes. Thank you. Okay, good. Welcome. Thank you. All right, I don't hear any further discussion on this. Um, uh, well, actually, a oh. quick question for Stephanie. So the reason this comes here, um, as opposed to being just a pre-existing non-conforming, is because of the change to channel letters? Um, because it's, it is a change to the illuminated the internal, yes, it's an internal. Because it's illuminated. Right. Oh, and I any, the, in, but I thought the box was the. It was illuminated, but they're replacing that with this when, one. If it's illuminated, you replace it with illuminated, you need purple. Per, you got to do it. Okay. That, yeah. I, and I don't know why. We, we shouldn't, but it's a yeah, way. There's a long story there. We could uh, talk yeah. about that someday and okay. maybe make some changes. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. A motion to approve internal illuminated sign for 594 Washington Street. Second, Stetson. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Um, Wolf? Aye. Stetson? Aye. Tatum? Aye. Zygmunt? Aye. And Deshane, aye. Okay, that passes, thank you. Good Thanks, luck. <laughs> thank you very much, and I uh, thank Suzanne for her help as well. Okay, have a good night. Good night. Okay, yeah. Is there a motion to continue? Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Rob. Oh, Motion yeah. to continue the public hearing for 523 Foundry Street, Stetson. Second, Kevin. Okay, further discussion, continuing to 227-24. Um, all in favor, Wolf? Aye. Stetson? Aye. Kadem? Aye. Zygmunt? Aye. Deshane, aye. All right, we have public hearing, 11 Coach Road, special permit, in law apartment, Sawmill Village, LLC. Um, this is a new special permit, right? So do we have, is there a hearing? Yes. Notice, sir, please proceed. Thank you. In accordance with the provisions of chapter 40A, section nine and section 11 MGL, the Easton Planning and Zoning Board will hold a hybrid public hearing on February 12th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. in the Colleen Corona Meeting Room, Easton Town Hall, 136 Elm Street, and also via Zoom on the following application from Sawmill Village LLC for a special permit in law apartment under Easton Town Code Chapter 235, zoning section 235 56 special permits, and section 235 44 in law apartments to allow the creation of an in law apartment located at 11 Coach Road, Easton, Mass. The agenda with the link to join the remote meeting will be posted 48 hours in advance of the meeting. All are invited to participate. This notice is also available at masspubliknotices.org. Peter DeShane, Chair. Thank you. 
Um, see, Suzanne, do we have any? Oh, um, hello. Is, hello. Uh, please introduce yourself um, for the record. Hi, good evening. It's Rick Lincoln with Sawmill Village LLC. Um, wish I could be there in person, but I heard snow was coming, so I left. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, as stated, um, where this is the first time I've done this out there at uh, Sawmill, and we have a situation on a uh, a house that's been uh, that's pre-sold. And the 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 fan the gentleman and and his wife wanted to um, finish the basement, which uh, is normally not a big deal. But then they wanted to add a bedroom, and uh, I was advised that you know it's typically allowed the square footage is typically allowed at twenty five percent of the uh, of the square footage of the the um, general living area, and which is. 1800 square feet and that would allow about 450 square feet and the plans that um we had agreed upon with the buyer are like a hair under 900 square feet i think it's like 888 square feet um so we'd like to try and petition um to get the uh the floor plan there approved um the finished basement doesn't change the house at all. Um, we already had a slider coming out the rear of the house on that bump out in the back there. Um, I'm just up a little further. Um, so the windows in the, uh, in the base, it's, um, uh, walkout basement to begin with so all of the windows in the back and the side were we were going to do anyways uh you know on that on a on a full wood wall back there and then we'll have the slider that walks out to the rear so from the exterior nothing has really changed um you can see where the gentleman and the wife they have one bedroom there and they they added a bath um and with the parking, it's a that you know we have an existing garage and the uh, and the driveway um, will hold two cars, so um, it will it will certainly support the the in law. Um, so we had to we struggled a little bit to keep it under nine hundred square feet. That's probably the sixth or seventh iteration, but we we found something I think that works for for everybody. So what you're doing there really is you're finishing the basement and that is increasing the, the living space of the. Right. Yeah. I tried to talk him out of the, uh, the, the bedroom. That's, that's what really triggered this. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they really would like the, the bedroom. And then are you changing the footprint of the structure or not? No, not at all. Okay. And then, so it's 888 square feet of, did you say 1250 was the original? Approved. I think the original is closer to, I'll say 1700. Oh, okay. I just, yeah, yeah. yeah so, 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 right. I, so then it, there's a bedroom and then what else? A kitchen and a living room and a bathroom. Is that what's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a little kitchen out there. Um, they probably could have done a little better job with that. It's right next to the stairwell coming down. So it's like a living room, kitchen type thing. Or, yeah. Right. Yep. Is that over here? Right that? there, yes. Oh, I see it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I I have a question. According to the bylaws, the in-laws apartment needs to have a separate entrance, or is not required. Do you know that? Stephanie, do you know? Well, for a walkout. You said it's a walkout basement, mm -hmm. right, yeah. Rick? But the yeah, it does have a separate entrance. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that would be the separate entrance. Yes. Are you planning for a sidewalk or something there? Or I don't know. We that's going to be an optional upgrade for them. Um, we haven't they haven't chosen that yet, but I told them I can do one. You know the the pavers like we were doing on the front of the houses. Uh, we agreed to. I'd keep it consistent. Yeah, could you maybe yeah, I think that? if it's going to be a 
you know, just something more natural rather than by, like poured concrete, which I know you've tried to avoid in general. But well, I think right. The, I think where Amos is mm -hmm. coming from is that the bylaw requires a separate entrance, mm -hmm. and yes. if this is an mm -hmm. entrance, it should have a path, mm -hmm. a finished path. Yep. Yeah. So can you do a, a finished path um, that is not uh, concrete or asphalt? Yeah, I think what I'll probably, you know, with the uh, grades dropping as they are, but, you know, one of the thoughts was to do a step down, you know, with the uh, with some granite, um, you know, we'll go every three feet and throw a granite step in, but, you know, the rest of the walkway will be uh, pavers. Yeah, just a heads up there, it'll probably be part of our conditions, right? So, um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yep, under, understood. Um, Stephanie? Um, did you have any problems no, with um, I, again, it met the um, intent of the bylaw and mm -hmm. with the yeah, path mm -hmm. to the separate entrance. Mm -hmm. um, does anyone else have any questions or suggestions? No. The, how they are making 888, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, the size was? <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, so, just two uh, feet yeah. short of the maximum. Well, uh, well, almost has a good question here. Let, let's just talk about the size here. Just give us an idea about the size of the rooms that you're, you're working on there, just so we get an idea of what you have. Well, we tried to get the uh, space um, as open as we can. You know, it's always a struggle in, in uh, basements with lally columns and so forth. Um, the, the house next door, we've actually eliminated a lally column, but we, you know, you have to use more steel, obviously. But um, so we, they were hoping, obviously, that the entire, you know, that that unfinished area up on the left, mm -hmm. but we can't, it would have exceeded the 900 square feet. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, we told them, let's, you know, use it as a storage closet or something, but it cannot be finished. Yeah. No, so I that, that. Yeah, people need so some, how some the, living space. That's the way so, they right? did it. They put yeah. the storage in here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, right. Like, like, like we have like the bigger condo, it's like the two bedroom, but then the ones downstairs are like the one bedroom condos. And you know, they're not, they're about the same size. They're not really, if you look at them, they don't seem like, like big or anything. They just seem like a, enough space for what is for a couple or table? maybe a couple and a couple what small children. Table? Yeah. To live, so. Yeah, my guess is they're probably going to use it more for, um, you know, either a home theater or something like that. Um, but I know when I do my apartments, you know, 900 square feet for a one bedroom is actually a larger one bed. Mm -hmm. I've done them as small as 700 square feet. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think this is going to be a common occurrence where you're trying to use an in-law um, specification, to, you know, for, for expansion or what's the, what's the actual intent for this particular unit? No, I think this couple really wanted the legal bedroom, which is what triggered this. Mm -hmm. All right. What does everyone think about that as far as like a, a pathway for um, these buyers to, to have a bigger, a, a finished basement with a bedroom? No problems. Well, I, so maybe I missed that. Is is this going to be, I mean, it's going to be for family members as opposed to, you know, correct Airbnb or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Which is outlawed anyways with, you know, our HOA docs. So there is that level of control on the entire development. Okay. Right. You wouldn't do it in your first 10 sales and like let them turn it to an Airbnb. But um, yeah, so there, is there still a stairway from the, the first floor to the basement? Yes. Yeah, right behind the kitchen out there. Okay. Yeah. So, Peter, do, can I add on? Yeah, sure. You? So, one of the things the board may recall that the compact neighborhood overlay district limits the size of the houses to 1,800 square feet, and then it also limits the number of bedrooms to two, um, which, and and. Um, so it also limits that, that 1,800 square feet is total living area. So it basically precludes finishing a basement. And if you think about that, it means this zoning means that in this part of town, it's the only part of town that you couldn't do a finished basement legally 
because you'd have your eight, unless you added your 1,800 square feet into the basement area as well. Mm -hmm. So it would really reduce the size of the house itself if you wanted a finished basement. Which was part of the intent of right. providing like a, a square foot cap in the first place, right? I mean, I... Well, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. We never talked about finished basements. It, mm -hmm. it didn't right. come mm -hmm. up during the, yeah. the mm -hmm. discussions. Um, well, it's, it's not exactly a finished basement. There is a difference because as soon as they put a, a room and a bathroom downstairs. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's that's why this, bedroom, this, right, this, yeah. this is being that, requested that, that is additional, as an in-law. Additional living space that, that's for right. additional people. That's right. That increases the density on that house. And I don't know if that is intention when we figure out this type of neighborhoods. Well, for an in-law apartment, um, I, I, I don't know. But I, again, I think that the thought about whether the fact that the way the zoning is written today, it allows the in-law, but it doesn't allow a finished basement. Unless, again, you reduce your living area upstairs. So it's, it's basically, so I'm not, if I'm, someone I'm bringing... wanted to increase the size of the house, this is a loophole. This would allow people to build an in-law apartment, which I, I feel is um, a great option for people who are looking to age in place and they have relatives that they could move in if they have an in-law. Um, I, I question whether the board intended to not allow a finished basement that pe many people use as a movie room or an extra uh, playroom you, where the kids can go and play their video games and things like that. So not for tonight's or, or this, but I just think this came up um, when Rick indicated he was going to be seeking an in-law apartment for this particular house. So all of so all of these homes have to have unfinished basements basic, based on the square footage requirements of the compact neighborhoods? The way it's written, if you, if you have 1,800 square feet. So that may be something the board wants to consider. Um, I, I don't think that they were all just, especially all going to have like a full basement in the first place until Rick reviewed his, the site plans and said, oh, these, you know, these, the, this is going to, with the, the drop down, right, it's going to work out better, right? Is, is that, Rick, wasn't that kind of the uh, change there, like towards the end, not all the way at the end, but towards the beginning yeah, of the Yeah, end? I think it all, it, it started with groundwater, mm -hmm. you know, so we ended up designing the whole site to, uh, you know, lift these, and then it resulted in all these walkout basements, which people love. You right, know, so you, so you lift up to I the love. road level, but you don't lift all the way back to like, the, the, you don't just like, like continue, you don't carry no. that past the, through the backyard like another 30 feet and then then it eventually slows back down, right? Yeah, so. Right. So it was kind of a surprise to me once we, we dove into the um, the bylaw and everything and it, it, it honestly made less sense to me because the whole thing is sewered. So I, I just didn't understand, um, you know, just it was a just didn't work out well with the uh, language. Mm -hmm. Well, it it is odd, and I think to Stephanie's point, I mean, why why wouldn't you be here asking for you know like a modification to the prior approval as opposed to you know throwing in a, a kitchen and doing a separation because if it's it, not going to be used really as a it wouldn't be a modification the way the zoning's written it would require a variance ah. All right, yeah. so that's the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we can't just modify that. I see. Okay. All right, yeah, I mean, so I'm okay with this one, but I think, like, just kind of think on the bigger picture here, like, you know, do you have for, if this continues to be, like, you know, becomes a, you know, a, a common theme, then, you know, we have to look at, like, overflow parking, you know, all those different, like, aspects, right? And even traffic, right? We have traffic counts there. Well, is, is this a precedent for mm -hmm. the rest of the houses that are going to be built here? And if you approve this, you mm -hmm. will need to probably, for consistency, approve all the next that are coming. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems that way. I mean, they're, you know, they're being 
pretty honest with us here. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. you know, but I appreciate they the candor. They could have said, oh, well, right. we just want to kind of plan for the future. We got to make a right. little story there, but they didn't, right? Yes. No, I, Which, I appreciate the candor. Right. But I think it raises that that's a question because, again, there are going to be instances where people probably do want an in law apartment and the board would probably want to approve it in this mm -hmm. neighborhood. But on the flip side of that, they, someone can't build out the basement as an extra living Right, but the fact room. is that the, the, the site plan changed due to, I guess, not insufficient engineering data. And then the, the, you know, the, the structures themselves changed from what we had originally contemplated when right. we approved 1,800 square feet. When we approved 1,800, it, we weren't really well, considering, it wasn't likely that there were going to be basement. basements to the extent that they could have a finished basement to triple the area. Well, was, of the, that, of the was that really the consideration when the zoning? Because yes, because, yeah, that's, that's why we had a, a limit on the size of the homes, because it was called compact neighborhoods. No, no, I understand smaller, that. Smaller, less expensive, right. Um, you know, right, yeah. Right, older, I, un older I understand the homes. limitation mm -hmm. on the bedrooms, but to in and the size of the lot so you'd have a smaller house sitting on a smaller lot mm -hmm. and you're not all overwhelming the lot with a larger house but what would the harm be from a density perspective in a finished basement well, just like parking traffic um yeah no I, Price. I, I, right, yeah. well also could, if i may oh, yeah go ahead also i think so I don't know, I'm not familiar with the history of this site and development, but my understanding is that compact neighborhoods are intended to promote housing for working families. Mm -hmm. So you're sort of moderate income folks. Um, and if you finish a basement without a bedroom, then presumably that's just finished square footage that adds to the value of your home for ultimately kind of leisure activities, whether it be a kid's playroom or a movie room or whatever. So it makes the house more expensive, whereas an ADU is to promote living space for people that need, you know, family members with them for one reason or another. So I think it's kind of, so having it finished as an ADU, I think is a very different thing than having it finished for another purpose other than actually somebody living there. So I think it's kind of two distinct things. So. I don't necessarily, it seems a little odd to me in this situation, I guess, because it seems a little counterintuitive, but I think it's two very, very different aims. I think it sounds like the intent of the compact neighborhood was to keep the finished square footage relatively compact so that it becomes more attainable um, on the market when these houses are sold and things. But ADUs are kind of a separate issue because you need somebody to live with you for one reason or another. So. Um, so, I, do you feel like this is going to become like a like a template for for um, a lot of other buyers that say, "Oh, if they did it, we want to do that now too." Like, do we need to like, uh, think of it in that on that scale from your your perspective? Oh, that was a question for you. Right? Well, oh, uh, well, I can't really speak to that. I can speak to the demographic we're seeing out there right now, which is is kind of what we expected uh, getting into this thing. And it's my age group, you know, so probably 55 plus, although I'm 65 plus. Mm -hmm. um, but you're getting, you're, uh, there probably will be an awful lot of um, demand for the finished basements. So you're getting an awful lot of downsizers, a couple people from Sharon already. This couple, for instance, is from Easton, you know, new family getting together. Uh, but in all these cases, thus far, it's early. They're uh, all the kids are adult kids. You know, you're not you, there, there are no families at this point. Um, and my guess is with land and pricing and everything else, that demographic is probably going to hold, you know, right. throughout the, the development. The demographic might want to have space for, for visitors and not squeeze their not squeeze like their kids. And they're great. Right. All in one room. And right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've heard comments about, oh, can we fit a pool table or, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. So there's a lot of people that really want to downsize like this. And of course, I'm doing the whole geothermal thing and all electric. They like the green, but you're the, I'm sure there'll be interest in finished basements for for um, 
you know, as Joanne said, uh, leisure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Amos, you have a question? So if uh, having an in-law apartment or mm -hmm. finished basement with a, with additional people living on the basement mm -hmm. is an exception, uh, and there is, I don't know how many houses are here, but it is 10% or 15 But if this end up being the norm, mm -hmm. uh, this neighborhood will have an additional density of people and cars and activity or that, that's something that you need to con contemplate, Rick, how, how that looks if this end up being not the, the norm or a great number of the houses go this way. Yeah, I've, and I've done this before. I had 66 houses in East Bridgewater, um, and I think East Bridgewater probably had a few more kids than than Easton. Um, but I don't, I don't really see the density increasing because I think this is a one-off with this this person wanting a bedroom down there. Yeah, I mean, I think um, we can improve it and they just, just proceed carefully going forward. Um, and having said that, right? Yeah, for the record, I suppose. But I'm not sure what you guys think. But yeah, how do you proceed carefully without setting like a precedent mm -hmm. going yeah, forward? I'm nervous like, about that. Mm -hmm. no. yeah, you, you, open, you open the door, that's it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems to me the big issue is, is the, the traffic one. So I'm considering we've got, um, you know, the, the MBTA on for tonight. I'm sure there are some people from that particular community that want to weigh in. I'm kind of curious what the public thinks. Yeah, all right, well, let's see if, they, let's see if there's any public comment. No? Not. Hmm. Do you guys need some, maybe some, another, another meeting to think about this a little bit and just kind of decide? Maybe we'll have a, now that we've talked to Rick, we'll, maybe we'll think about it and, and have a, some better thoughts next time. Where is Dale when you need him? <laughs> well, you would think he'd be here tonight. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, his father has a 97 years birthday. Yep. All right, Rick, let, let's do this. Let's, let's, um, let's, bring it, let's put it out another meeting. Uh, if you could just tonight, would you do some, um, do some numbers for us? Wait a second. Uh, maybe like, explain, you know, kind of tell us if this, uh, let's see, <clears> if, you had, if you had another, if, like twenty five percent of these units ended up with a finished basement or the bedroom. Like, you know, how many more? How much more space that is? And uh, I'm not saying you have to redo a traffic study or anything, but just give us give us some perspective here, and then bring it back to us. Let us sit, think about it and how that's going to work. Suzanne, Suzanne, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. Yep, Suzanne. I think Dale and his is trying um, to. Do he has been summoned by the board. Remind me, Stephanie. Yes. We, when we were discussing this, and there was this problem with the contamination on this area, on this in this land, and I asked the question, they are filling up with a lot of material on top, and uh, I say, are going to have basement because if you do a basement, you are excavating the material, and you get mm -hmm. to where probably. The, there might be contamination. And I remember that the answer was that there were not, mm -hmm. would not be any basements. So I remember, I remember, so Rick, were you able to hear Amos? And Peter, if I may respond mm -hmm. to Amos's question. Were you able to hear I Amos? did. Okay. So, um, it, it, and I just want to address, there, the only contamination that was found on the site. I know that. I, I just need to say that, though, for the public who may be thinking, um, there, that was cleaned up. But yes, when people were not convinced that that was sufficient, Rick did mention that you were bringing in a substantial amount of fill and that you would not be breaking down to the native soil. So to Amos's question, um, how high is that fill versus the depth of the basements? 
Well, we're so the reason that we're bringing the fill in has nothing to do with contamination or virgin soils or anything like that. It has everything to do with groundwater being um, our footings are above groundwater out there. And that this is how we design the site to um, to make sure there's no water in the basements um, and slab on grade housing in that development probably would never work i mean you wouldn't sell the houses i mean here are these people already wanting uh you know some finished basements so mm -hmm. i honestly think again um that these legal bedroom finished basements, you know, because of the square footage is probably going to be a bridge to cross another day. But adding a bedroom in the basement is going to cost another $10,000 in just the sewer connection fee. And these people know that. So um, I don't think you're going to get a lot of people wanting to add a bedroom. You know, I think it generally is more just finished basements. But again, I can't. I can't add that square footage um, right now. Right. And at a certain at a certain point, if they want a bigger house, they'll just go find a bigger house somewhere else, right? Yeah, it's not. But um, yeah. And if these are primarily people who are downsizing, mm -hmm. yep. they're not looking mm -hmm. for bigger houses. They're generally looking for less mm -hmm. to maintain. I would imagine. Yeah, I, I, I just worry about the precedent. Yeah. That's that's what. So, it would become a precedent if it came back. I mean, the board could vote tonight and then Peter, the request that if another ADU unit was applied for, the board at that time could request that Mr. Lincoln estimate what 25% of the units with ADUs would generate in traffic. Right, and it could eventually like trigger like a modification of the of the uh, special permit and site plan because um, it's it's kind of going beyond what we what, yeah, what we'd originally approved. Whereas one is not one does not create that situation, but whereas mm -hmm. uh, two might uh, we might start at, when we get to two we might start thinking okay so now this is the second one in in whatever a couple in a few months right and then so now we have to really start thinking how this will affect the overall project. That work for you guys? I'm comfortable looking at it like that. Yeah. Suzanne. Oh, yeah, sure. Hi, this is Dale Carrister, 21 South Street. Can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. And I did intend to be there in person, but I, I got a couple more hours worth of work to do tonight. So, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so I've been very supportive of Rick's project. I've spoken in favor of the project before, and my comments now are not do not diminish that in any way. He's been very responsive to the neighborhood and previously come and spoke to about 60 of our uh, members uh, a few years back to explain the project. He was there along with his attorney to answer questions. The My comment really is just to the extent that there is going to be an additional density. It just really heightens my concerns in vis-a-vis -vis the MBTA zoning. Um, you know, to the extent that there's going to be some additional density here, it reinforces our concerns that we've raised in many meetings about the current traffic problems and additional traffic problems. So, so it reinforces my desire, my hope that the board ultimately will, you know, reduce the size of that MBTA district in the Eastman Street to 30 acres rather than the current 68 and go with the multiple three districts, which is, I think, what the chair had indicated uh, he was intending to discuss with the the, um, the planning and zoning board tonight. So those are my comments. Thank right. you. Yeah, yeah, good point, right? Yeah, I mean, the way we're looking at it right now is that if this is what, say, if you wanted to put an in-law in your house, or one of your neighbors did, right? We're looking at it just on that standalone basis where... Um, it is an option under the zoning bylaw, under the special permit, and we're looking at it as like a standalone uh, situation where one potential property owner wants to add one um, in-law apartment. So, right, sure. I'm sure we wouldn't think about it differently if someone from South Street um, wanted to add an in-law. We say, oh well, you know, we're we're being careful about all the uh, all the traffic in this area, so we, uh, you know, you're out of luck. You can't you can't have an in-law apartment in your house. So that's the 
where we have to kind of we have to look at it like that, not not um, not worry about every one in the neighborhood building an in-law apartment just because they can. Right. I mean, this project you know can be a little different just because of the similarity of you know mm -hmm. and so forth. But again, I'm I'm not speaking against uh, Rick's mm -hmm. you know uh, proposal this evening. It's really more a matter of just reinforcing the concerns that we've raised about traffic overall and the need for having three multiple you know, districts and having a smaller Eastman Street district. Mm -hmm. So that's really where I'm focused, mm -hmm. my, yeah. my comment. Great. Okay, thank you. Oh, any other public comment there now that we've um, heard from Dale? They're probably, probably going to be three cars and not two. Mm -hmm. oh, well, not necessarily, right? Yeah, not, not, yeah, well, I think the idea is that... I say probably. Yeah, well, yeah, the idea, you know, some people say... If you live in other parts of town, you have, have driveways, and sometimes you have to pull out for someone. You know, it happens, right? Yeah, especially when you, people end up with kids, depending on how many kids they have. But yeah, you're right. Um, so, you guys want to close this and then think about it? We can close it and take a vote. What do you guys? What, what does the board like you, to do? You, you need a motion mm. to close public hearing. If we don't have any further discussion. Uh, Rick, do you want us to close this public hearing? Sure. Yeah. Motion to close public hearing for a uh, sawmill village mm -hmm. in law apartment. Okay. okay. For the discussion, there are none. Um, all in favor? Um, Zygmunt? Aye. Katem? Aye. Stetson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Deshane, aye. That passes. All right. Um, now we can take two weeks to think about it, or we can make a motion to approve, deny. Well, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with mm -hmm. kind of what you had laid out. Okay. I, yeah. I, I like the idea of, you know, treating this one as a one-off, and yeah. if it starts to look like it's maybe becoming a pattern, then, then we can maybe, you know, treat it as a pattern. At this yep. point, it's not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm, I'm comfortable that that kind of prevents it from becoming a, a precedent mm -hmm. tonight. Yep. Okay, I like it. We need, to, war we need to word it as such, right? Hmm? The motion needs to be worded yeah. as such. What do you, I mean, go, go for it. Um, motion to approve the, uh, the uh, plan as, uh, as brought in, but with the uh, condition that this is a one-off and it will be uh, discussed in the future if additional requests are coming to us. Second, Stetson. Okay, uh, all in favor, Katem? Aye. Stetson? Aye. Uh, Zygmunt? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Deshane, aye. All right, that passes, thanks. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, so Stephanie, if, um, what's, uh, Suzanne, once we have the, the decision draft, uh, maybe you can distribute to everyone, so yep. maybe they'll have an idea of, you know, that, that'll be our time to think about it for how maybe we could uh, yep. for the decision, thanks. Okay. All right. Um, next up is 661 Washington Street, Site Plan Review, Matthew Realty, LLC. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Yep. Scott yep. Faria from, mm -hmm. from Holmgren Engineering, uh, representing Matthew Realty uh, for the Volkswagen dealership that's uh, been before you folks uh, back a year ago in through the springtime. Uh, need to stop me. Oh. Oh, uh, Susanna, are you okay? I'm just going to unplug so that we can. Oh. Mm -hmm. We're good? But you'll have to do the same thing, I think, for him oh. and share. So, share Scott, oh. I think you need to share your screen. Please. Oh, oh there you go. Um, but you, uh, you are you nope. sharing your screen? No, I'm not. It uh, somebody else is sharing apparently. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what bird dog is. No, me neither. Like, no, it's like this. No, one second. Stop sharing. One second. Oh. I'll try now. Well, the two monitors might make it. The, the, the hybrid 
-hmm. We haven't mastered this yet. No. <laughs> the straight Zoom meetings, look, it, but it's two years shares, to master those. If he shares. He's supposed to be, I think he's supposed to be able to share. If he shares, his picture disappears. Yeah, he should just be able to share over, over his own I think own it's Zoom easier right than Good. trying to do it here. Okay. Good. Well, we'll do that. Oh, yeah. there we go. Oh, yeah, so we want to have the split screen. Okay, go See, ahead. I knew we could do it. Go ahead, Scott. Sorry. All right. Very good. All right. Uh, thank you, folks. Again, <laughs> Scott Ferry. Go. Yep. All right. Uh, 661 Washington Street, the Silco Volkswagen that you folks have uh, voted on previously. Uh, the folks at Silco recently acquired property at 125 Depot Street. Uh existing house uh, right here at the bottom of the property that I'm moving my cursor around. Uh, that was obviously a direct abutter. We had our parking area proposed uh, basically surrounding that property. Silco has recently purchased the property. Uh, we've gone through the historic committee to, uh, to get a permit to raise the structure. Uh, so we're before you tonight for a modification of the site plan to allow this new layout right here, Mr. Chairman and board members, uh, this new layout, it's the exact same building, same entrance off of Depot, same entrances off of Washington Street. It's an additional uh, 67 spaces from the original plan to this plan. Uh, the 67 spaces, obviously this additional impervious area required some additional drainage. The site drains uh, from this corner of the property kind of across the property. So it really worked out well for us. It was easy to capture into our previously approved drainage system, which I'll scroll around to, which is right here in the in the corner near Depot Street. So this whole uh, new area will be captured into that drainage system. We added some footage to that drainage system. Uh, everything else on the site, Mr. Chairman, the utilities, size of the building, everything else stays the same. Uh, I think the most significant change uh, to the plans was the landscaping plan. As you folks remember, we met out there, uh, I believe, early in the summer uh, to discuss the landscaping around uh, these the two Depot Street properties uh, in, to try to make sure that we would uh, be buffering them from the, the back of the dealership and the parking lot from the dealership. Now that we've acquired that 125 property, uh, 129 becomes the, the most affected one. I'm just trying to get to my landscape plan, uh, which is right here. So what we've done, uh, the house at 129 uh, has their own row of arborvitaes right up alongside their property line. We're proposing along our property line on our side adjacent to their arborvitaes, uh, an eight foot high stockade fence. As you remember, when we were out there uh, last year, we agreed on going with an eight foot fence as opposed to the typical six foot fence just to, to help those folks out uh, a little bit more. So we have a, a run of fence then the Colorado spruce, another run of eight foot fence and then some more Colorado spruce. So it's it's essentially the the exact same uh, method of buffering and landscaping that you had previously approved uh, instead of buffering 125 and a portion of 129. Now we're uh, buffering 129 entirely. So that is uh, that is the significant change, uh, folks, uh, along with, again, the 67 additional parking spaces. What about, um, what about like more buffering in the back? You didn't, that, that, the back hasn't changed, right? Because the back was already, that was, that was the property line? Uh, what? Yeah, exactly. This, this back area, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of wide open. It's a, a large uh, lawn area. And, and we agreed that that was so far removed. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the greenhouse and the, the dwelling uh, that the end of our eight foot fence would be more than enough buffering. Even in the greenhouse, it would buffer you from looking at the, uh, the dealership and certainly from the house, you wouldn't, uh, the, right. the yeah. spruce in the fence would act as a buffer. So that's where we ended it uh, at the last now, approval. Have, have you talked to the new, um, the, your new abutting neighbor recently? Um, yeah, we've 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 met out on site uh, mm -hmm. before construction with you folks. I believe we met out just oh, as construction I mean, since like since this uh, since you bought the other property and, and I, uh, have started. Yeah, the folks. The, yeah, the folks at Silco have. Yes, I believe mm -hmm. so. All right. Uh, what about lighting? Uh, do you have uh, increasing lighting? 
on that. Yeah, the, the lighting. Yeah, the lighting really just uh, shifted where this was the border previously. We have added a bank of lights, but then the uh, the border lights just shifted down to the, the edge of the parking. And again, as you can see, we, we've got a, a little bit of a, a large uh, landscaped area right there. Uh, we're not paving right up to the lot line. So, so what, what a, are the, the border lights? What are those structure, are they, um, like post lights? What are they? Yeah, they're, they're down facing, uh, yeah, yeah downward high? facing lights. Yep. How high are they? Dark, dark sky. Yeah, you know, and what's, what's the height? Yeah, dark sky compliant. So, uh, so what height is the light at? Vertical height. Like, just see it so I don't tell you, but I believe it is uh, 20. I believe it is 20 feet high, Mr. Chairman. Right. So now those 20, 20, so now those 20 feet high lights are going to be 20 feet from this the, your new new neighbor. Correct. As again, as they were previously to the the other neighbor. It's, mm -hmm. Well, do you have any uh, new ideas? Um, well, I'm just thinking that you know it, that was kind of opportunistic to uh, to purchase that other property to expand the parking. It doesn't seem like um, we're really doing much more for the for the new uh, you know for the new. Neighbor. Is there any more you can do here for the new neighbor? Maybe consider what, uh, the location of those lights or even more screening. I think you need to shoot. Um, well, to be honest with you, I don't know that any more screening. I mean, it, again, it, it's it's the pretty much the same screening that we agreed to last time uh, with you folks. Again, the eight foot fence. But if it's a, a 20 foot light that, is, again, is only facing the parking lot, it, it's it's not facing that abutting well, property. Yeah, right, right. Well, the difference is before we were trying to make this work, right? we want something to happen there. Um, now something is happening there and we have an opportunity to, to make it maybe better than, than it could have been before because we were trying to be very accommodative. So um, that's why I'm asking you as the engineer if you have any ideas on how you can make, actually make it better given the fact that um, um, you have, you've had the opportunities to purchase that other property. Oh, I'm yeah, you say, Scott, you are saying that the lights faces the, the, the new property, the parking lot there. Uh, it, there right. Is there, there is a way in which that light really faces that direction and it doesn't reflect into the house. In other words, someone on the house looking through the window will not see a light coming in. Well, well I know... Could even maybe put like ten foot lights around that perimeter on that side. I mean, is there a way to illuminate that side of the, the parking lot and, sufficiently uh, without a twenty foot lights twenty feet from the property line? Yeah, and shield, shielded from the the light from coming in the direction of the mm -hmm. water. Yeah, like I'm just not like a I'm not a light architect, so I don't know some of right. the, the options available out there. Yeah, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I think on on this light in particular, the one closest to the house, there's certainly a uh, a back shield that can be placed uh, around the fixture just to not so, only to so shield you're, it. So you're, are you saying, in your opinion, it's impossible to illuminate that parking lot sufficiently without low, shorter lights in that section? I, I that's what yes, I think yes, I think this light here, if we put a, a back shield on it, it would prevent anybody from house 129 looking uh, through their house at our light. Oh, but you're also saying that's impossible to illuminate that, that section of the parking lot sufficiently with, with shorter lights. No, because are, are those also lights, the pole uh -oh. with the, the crosses? Not sure. well, those yeah. crosses are lights? Yeah, I think Stephanie just had a comment there, on, maybe on this subject, so wasn't sure. Well, in my report, I said they should be providing a photometric plan because mm -hmm. the photometric mm -hmm. plan should show us it, it should mm -hmm. be consistent with the lighting that they're using. And if it's forward casting yeah. onto the parking lot and it doesn't cast mm -hmm. backwards, that should show on the photometric yeah. plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And, and you know, that, you know, okay. most of us live on streets with street lights, so it's not like we don't know what, sure. it, what a light looks like. But um, you know, I'm just trying to think how we can, we have a chance to make it yep. a little better here. So that's and, what I'm right. trying to explore. And that is. Uh, and, and I know that. Shorter lights, mm -hmm. because we just had um, Gianna's that opened mm -hmm. yep. on Washington Street, mm -hmm. and they were supposed to have shielded lights, and mm -hmm. the first installation, the light 
didn't have the back shield. Oh, yeah. And they're not, I, I don't think they're 20 foot tall mm -hmm. lights. Yeah. Um, they did shield them mm -hmm. um, after the abutter yeah. called. Yeah. So um, it, 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 I can't see. But you still have, mm, it still looks like it's casting quite yeah. a bit of because, light. When because I probably, at that. probably doesn't include the shielding. Yeah, I mean, Scott, we're giving you ideas here. We're anyway. saying you could put more trees in that corner, right? You could eliminate five parking spots out of 60 more parking spots. You could consider some new lighting. I mean, are those options that you can consider? I just wanted us to talk about what you have right here and just talk about it until we say yes or no. No, I, 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 okay. I'm always willing to, to talk about it, Mr. Chairman. I was just waiting for you folks to, to, okay. uh, to give your opinions as you have. So, yeah, I, I think I, I don't think any additional screenings are going to help. We can certainly... Uh, right in this area here where my cursor is alongside yeah. our eight foot fence yeah. Be between our eight foot fence and the edge of the parking, we could certainly extend our row of Colorado spruce, yeah. which are yeah. eventually going to get yeah. higher than those lights. Mm -hmm. uh, no, so man. right now we have a, a row of five. Mm -hmm. We could increase that, that string of Colorado spruce all the way down uh, opposite the existing house at 129. Okay, and just to entertain us, could you maybe just ask your lighting supplier if they if they have any ideas on like a on a short like a ten or twelve foot light that that could accomplish your needs? Yeah, I think you know I I certainly can. I think the a ten foot light we would more than likely just have to add mm -hmm. add a couple yeah, of more. Yeah, they might just light. say, hey, that's just not possible. You know, it doesn't work for uh, sure. yep. for car dealerships. Just need twenty foot lights. Maybe that's what they'll say. To you. I don't know. Right. I also have another question. Was that photometric plan um, provided with the application? Yes, it was. Okay, because I know I looked for it, but I, I didn't find it. Okay. It, it shows light on the neighbor. Yeah. I mean, it yeah, does but show I, the light I, I probably doesn't include any, any means to uh, right. mitigate it, that. Mm -hmm. And we are asking right. you to come back to us with the solution that mitigates the lights into the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think about like a stormwater. That, like, think of it as like stormwater report, right? We're trying to, you're trying to not like uh, make the, you're trying to make sure. these no worse than existing conditions were, right? Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. Understood. You accomplish that. No. Think about it from that. Maybe that will kind of um, get you on the right path there. Yeah, I think the the addition of the spruce trees in that area, and we'll mm -hmm. we'll certainly talk to the lighting manufacturer about the back shield. And in mm -hmm. addition to that, if there's uh, anything else they would suggest just to yeah. to make sure we don't have any overspill. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and do they else have any um, specific suggestions or general ones for that? No, it, it looks nice. Okay. Um, so and and the stormwater review came back mm -hmm. yeah. um, approved. So okay. well. they were all set on that front. Mm -hmm. So you're holding off right. on building that second stormwater until you know exactly. Well, you think it's going to be big enough as is, but you're going to wait up, wait for this approval for that design. But you're working on the front right now. Yeah, exactly. We're doing the one in the front. It, mm -hmm. You know, the the away. drainage structures take so long to order. We didn't want to jump the gun uh, on right. the on the town's review consultant and get them ordered and, and have a little change because once you order them, you buy them. So uh, now that we have Mr. Cheshire's, uh, at least his blessing on the uh, the the new stormwater, we can at least proceed. Mm -hmm. A little bit on the ordering, but the it was always uh, figured to be a little bit of a phased project, just because we're running out of room on the on the site, so they wouldn't be able to do both systems at once. So, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll find something that'll work yeah, at the next meeting. Yeah, I just don't, I just don't want to just kind of go, go with this and say, oh, that yeah. what a what how 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 lucky that was to buy the extra lot, just throw sixty parking sure. spots and parking spots and plant six more trees and call it call it a day, right? So we just need to think about it a little more. So we appreciate um, your understood. Time. Sure, yeah, I think I would. Like to request a continuance, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Cool. All right. Um, it's good with me. Um, anyone have a motion to continue to the next meeting? Oh, motion to continue site plan review for 661 Washington Street. Second, Stetson. Okay. Just uh, further, just any further discussion? Uh, were there any neighbors or anyone from the pub did anyone from the public want to speak? No. Okay. Um, all in favor? Wolf. Aye. Stetson. Aye. Tatum. Aye. Zygmunt. Aye. All right. Deshay and I. All right. Um, see you at the next meeting. Thank you. All right. Thank you, folks. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Um, next up, we have um, the
the this is what we're calling the re-noticed community housing zoning MBA communities MGL chapter 40A um, and 3A. Um, Stephanie, can you just give us a quick uh, introduction here I, on what we're you, doing? So um, Bob needs to read the mm -hmm. legal Down. notice into the record. Yep, yeah, sure. we're just re-noticing because a few people had missed uh, meetings. We want to just make sure everything's um, kind of kind of reset um, the whole whole thing here and that doesn't really change anything except for Bob reading this then we'll get going okay notice of public hearing zoning bylaw and MAP amendments the Easton Planning and Zoning Board will hold a hybrid public hearing in accordance with the provisions of MGL chapter 40a section 5 on Monday February 12 2024 at 6 30 p.m. in the Cor Colleen Corona meeting room Easton Town Hall 136 Elm Street and also via zoom to consider amending the Easton Zoning Bylaw Chapter 235 of the Easton Town Code to create a community housing overlay district, allowing multifamily housing by right to comply with the requirements of MGL Chapter 40A, Section 3A for MBTA communities. More information, including proposed subject district maps and zoning language, is available at easton.mass.us backslash MBTA zoning and on file with the Planning Department Office during business hours at Town Hall, 136 Elm Street. A link to access the hybrid meeting may be found on the calendar on the town's website. This notice is also available at masspubliknotices.org. Peter DeShane, Chair. Thank you. Uh, all right. Okay, so, so what do you have? I will try not to read this verbatim, but mm -hmm. wait, I need to make sure we get as much of the meeting. So. Um, this hearing, the original hearing was opened on October 2nd, 2023. At that time, the public hearing notice was read. The potential zoning maps of the three districts were reviewed and the requirements of Chapter 40A, which is known as the Zoning Act. 3A is the amendment um, that re requires MBA to, MBTA communities to have multifamily zoning by right. Those requirements were reviewed at that meeting, and the zoning bylaw, um, a proposed draft of 235.40 multifamily zoning for discussion was reviewed. And then we talked about the steps the town has taken to date. So as everyone will recall, the MBTA community zoning requires that MBTA communities have a multi uh, have a zoning district that allows multifamily housing by right. And it requires that district to be a minimum of 50 acres in total. It may be comprised of sub-districts that each are a minimum of um, one that's a minimum of 25 contiguous acres and then any others being no less than five contiguous acres. The district in total must have the uh, capacity to allow 15 units per acre with a minimum total capacity across the district of 10% of the communities, meaning Easton's permanent housing stock, which is would be 913 units is 10% of that permanent housing stock number. Um, the district cannot restrict the size of units, the number of bedrooms, or the age of occupants. And Easton is an MBTA community because it is adjacent to um, three other communities that host MBTA transit stations um, and therefore needs to adopt the zoning by the end of this year, 1231-24. We talked at the prior meetings and subsequent meetings that the zoning may include an affordability requirement of no more than 10% of all units proposed within a project, and that is part of Easton's draft zoning. Um, that requirement will be included. We talked that towns that do not comply become ineligible for certain state funding programs such as the Mass Works Infrastructure Program, Housing Choice Capital Grant, um, both of which Easton has been uh, significantly benefited from. And the Attorney General has issued an advisory stating communities must comply, that they cannot opt out, and non-compliant communities risk liability under federal and state housing laws. The steps that 
the town has taken today were um, to date include interim compliance with the select board holding a briefing in January of 2022 and a presentation of the requirements that were outlined in the guidelines issued by DHCD. Um, they appointed an implementation review team comprised of representatives of various boards and commissions um, who were charged with reviewing the guidelines, drafting comments for the town to submit to the state regarding the guidelines, and then establishing goals and guiding principles for developing the zoning district and identifying potential areas for consideration. Um, that group also um, worked with the town staff to complete steps for interim compliance. The planning board has reviewed the legal framework um, and been briefed on the eight areas that were initially identified as potential districts based on the final guidelines um, that included some restricted parcels, including local historic district uh, areas, properties with preservation restrictions, or 40R developer agreements that had certain restrictions. Um, it was determined that there were three potential districts that were most suitable and met the goals and were consistent with the guiding principles established by the review team as well as other Eastern planning documents. And those three districts included what we refer to as the Eastman Foundry Street, which I'll present again when we start talking about the different districts, which is um, located where Eastman, where Foundry Street uh, becomes Eastman Street and you have Robert Drive and the Avalon Development Shaw's, Pla um, I'm sorry, Big Y Plaza and Target. Belmont, Washington, which is the southeast corner of Belmont and Washington Streets, and then North Washington, which is comprised of the Roach Brothers Plaza and the apartment units across the street. And the goal was walkable neighborhoods with amenities and services where people want to live with access to public utilities, especially sewer, and access to major transportation corridors or relatively proximate public transit. Members commented um, that the zoning requirement presents a good opportunity for the town to consider housing needs and add some by right zoning. The board discussed that if the district was largely oversized, there was the risk the zoning would not pass at town meeting. The board discussed any kind of development that may occur in the district will occur over time and there will not be an immediate redevelopment of existing developed parcels. There will be roadway improvements on Foundry Street, including the new traffic light at Pequannacat Ave and Foundry, and with the TIP project in eight to 10 years, um, additional traffic management improvements, sidewalk, and bicycle accommodations. This is an opportunity to push forward some of the goals the board has been discussing, including creating a walkable neighborhood. Importantly, as part of this review, feedback, comments, and concerns from members of the public were raised during the public information session on October 11th. Um, and they, they were raised at the October 2nd meeting as well. And um, they came substantially from residents of the Furnace Village District, which is the area between Foundry and Depot Street and Eastman Street. And they focused on increases in traffic along Foundry Street, which is already heavily traveled and congested during rush hour. The district also includes subdistricts in other locations of town and not just at Foundry Eastman. Um, that was one of the concerns or um, suggestions raised by residents. Those residents also expressed concern that increased traffic on 106 would delay emergency response times. Residents were also informed that multifamily can include ownership, including condominiums or small houses. It's up to the developer what they want to build. The same concerns um, that were raised at those previous meetings of the board were raised by Furnace Village residents at the January 29th public session held at the VFW specifically for the Furnace Village neighborhood. And those comments were also reviewed at the board's meeting um, the end of January. 
And I think that, that was a mistake. It was the January 26th, the Furnace Village neighborhood meeting was the 26th of January, or the 25th, and it was the January 29th meeting that the board, that Peter and I shared those comments with the board. At their meeting on January 10th, the board focused on the other two proposed districts, which, again, were Washington, Belmont, and the um, North Washington districts. Support for locating the district in other parts of town was, were, has been reiterated by Furnace Village residents in attendance at meetings. And again, at the 29th meeting, the board considered reducing the districts based on the feedback that they have received. So um, the discussion was on Washington North. In this district, the parcels that are townhouses on the easterly side were removed. The townhouses are owner-occupied and not likely to be developed was the reasoning for that. Foundry Eastman removed Target, Shopping Plaza, and possibly the warehouse. And Washington Belmont removed IBC which was the area that's kind of pseudo-industrial park. And questions that were raised and comments expressed by the board during this discussion were why eliminate these townhouses and not eliminate Avalon? Avalon is unlikely to be rebuilt, was the response. If there are existing housing developments that the community likes, it would make sense to remove those to prevent development. And so I think the discussion tonight was to continue with the... Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, let's just look at the maps and let's get the maps close so we can run some new numbers and have something um, ready to go. So let's start with uh, Foundry, please. Let's just get yep, Foundry let me go behind us if we can, if possible. Okay. okay. Um, so based on a lot of input from uh, some of the residents and... Um, Sorry. This some other towns, not very nuanced, and possibly some support of some other boards that we've um, talked to. Um, looks like we're going to eliminate um, Stephanie. I think in um, what you just read, um, you said target, but not big Y. I think we, uh, uh, I think target and big Y. Are I said both. target okay. and big Y. So target, big Y, and, and then, possibly yep. the. And then we talked about the um, the warehouse area, which is right. right there. You can barely see the green outline around that. So this target, big wide, the plaza, we included these smaller mm -hmm. parcels as well, and then the um, yep. warehouse okay, yeah, right just, there. Just to back up a little bit for anyone that missed, has missed all the action over the last month or so, um, is that we you know, we're contemplating the three zones, and we're trying to not go much more than much over than what we need, what we what we need, right? So we need about 933 units. If we get somewhere between 950 and 1,000, then, then we'll have kind of sort of done. Don't give more than you we'll, need. We'll have done what we've been directed to do by the town. Um, and yes. what we feel is right, for at least some of us feel is, is yeah. the right approach that the town should take, um, given this um, to conform with the state mandate. Um, so keep in mind, um, so Target and Big Y are out of this zone, and most likely um, that warehouse. Um, there has been what we call the, the fingers there. On, on the uh, Long Eastman, um, there's the owner is considering a non multi a non multi family use, uh, but he could decide tomorrow that he just wants to sell it, and then it, that would still be included in the zone under what we're contemplating here. So let's move on to the next map, and then we'll just talk about it. So uh, yeah. do you want to mm -hmm. do? Um, yeah, well, this is an easy one, right? So um, this was the, uh, kind of the third zone there, um, just to reduce the, the area. Uh, we just, like Stephanie mentioned in her um, summary, was that we're just uh, eliminating the townhouse and other lots um, to the east of Washington. So just, just including like the whole, the Roach Brothers and the medical um, area. And next. I do have it oh, in oh, yeah, oh, that's yeah, right. It was first. first one, sorry. sorry. Um, Belmont. So right now, Stephanie, you have um, IDC um, removed. Um, it's, I think that will get us probably right around where we need to be. Um, you know, we could pull out the marketplace if, if, we, if we had to. Um, I think some people have you know, interest in to see that um, develop differently. Although, you know, it's had some action. It has, 
it's more full now with business than it has been in a long time. Um, so yeah, uh, surprisingly. So what do you what do you all think? Um, are we on the right track here, board members? Before we open this back up to the public. Um, yes. I know there were some feelings that Foundry uh, was the was our best option, um, but that's probably not going to. Not going to happen that way now um, after receiving a lot of input from a lot of townspeople and boards. I think I maybe have a very basic question about this one, which is mm -hmm. that is it contiguous with the, if you eliminate the driveway? Mm -hmm. It's still considered contiguous? I think we have the, the five. Mm -hmm. okay. You have the minimum five okay. acres yeah. on each okay. side. Yeah, it might end up being like yeah. two different. Two, okay, yeah, yeah, maybe it's like might, four yeah. zones if you split them up. But yeah, yeah. okay. But good question, though. Here is where the sewer can be extended, right? Correct. Yes. So it of, makes sense. Yeah. Of course, Foundry Eastman is completely mm -hmm. sewered. This one, the sewer could be extended. Yeah, I was actually thinking we could have just gone farther down Belmont, but let's, we don't have to go there now. But what are they working on the road there right now? Anyways, just in general. On Foundries? Yeah. No, on Belmont, um, Belmont Street. Yeah. They're doing road work. I, think I don't yeah. often. Water? Yeah. I think it's water. Mm -hmm. Is, is, there, is there all water around, a, I around? think it's all part of the infrastructure, the ARPA infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying oh. that, that the okay. uh, program, because there's been a lot. I mean, every town has a lot of infrastructure work going on. Oh, yeah. So yep. Either gas and water or water. Water, and gas. gas and yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any questions about uh, suggestions on this zone? No. Or any of the other zones? Um, no. This okay, is the time it? to. Uh, we can't just ask uh, Stephanie Wayne to keep on rerunning the numbers for us. So this is uh, the time to really get this get this down. Well, so we're we're at. I'm looking at the tally here. We're mm -hmm. at 1393. Yeah. Well, Stephanie, can you explain what your tally is including and excluding, please? So, and before I do, can mm -hmm. I just give you an update? Oh, we yeah, did sure. receive um, a response to our mm -hmm. pre-adoption application. Oh. Mm -hmm. from the housing housing and livable community. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of things, and I, um, I will display it, but I think we'll, we'll need to make a couple of minor changes to mm -hmm. the zoning language itself because there are areas that they're saying um, there are areas of the code that might conflict with the density, mm -hmm. um, which would make it non-compliant, and those are easy things to fix. Yep. Um, also... There is the, um, I'll show you here. Let me pull it up. Right. A floodplain mm -hmm. extends down through here, mm -hmm. and that might require. Um, we have to pull that out of the calculation. We have to pull that out of the calculation, but I don't think that would have any adverse effect there. Mm -hmm. So based on that and the feedback that we received, it looks like we're in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've been talking about making sure that when they do the final evaluation, we have sufficient um, extra room just, yeah. just Area in case. So I think clearly with 1393, I, I think there would be no mm -hmm. worry about that, yeah. that the districts mm -hmm. would all be in compliance. Um, but 1393 is now, so which under, is it based on the exact what you have that laid is out what on, on these maps here? Exactly as they're shown here. So are we trying to shave a few hundred off, or what, what's no. the thinking? No, no. But, oh yeah, we can shave this. Yeah, we can shave this down to like a we thousand. We already shave it to this. I think yeah. if you, it was a lot more. We can't. Oh, it, I we, understand yeah, that, yeah, but I guess so. Exact, get like exactly 933, yeah. but yeah, so to around. But I know that we were trying to have some kind of a buffer, mm -hmm. and we. Yep. So do we? Are we comfortable with this number? I guess is the question. We're comfortable with this, and we think that the community is comfortable. Well, so the meetings that we've been doing, I think when we present the the maps mm -hmm. and people understand. I'm, people don't come out and say I'm for mm -hmm. or against. I th but the sense of the room is, okay, yeah. all right, I get it, mm -hmm. and um, it makes sense. And we've been talking more recently as the board has talked about the potential for reducing the districts like this. And, and again, I'm, we have not received um, mm -hmm. real adverse comments. Well, it's less than half now yes. out of Foundry Eastman. I can imagine that that mm -hmm. would um, mm -hmm. appeal to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some of the 
people that have commented thus yep. far. Yep. Well, the, the people on that district also were asking to consider other districts to spread the load of the possible sure. development. Yep. And we have done that too, so mm -hmm. that has, it's a step. Right, right. Yeah. And, and I think that's what people, and people get that. You know, mm -hmm. Again, we've been doing presentations. How many we've done? Oh, yeah. 12 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. so far to municipal mm -hmm. boards. And, um, you know, that, that's the one thing you, that they, when you show, we're trying to cover each of the, you know, kind of sides of town. And it makes a lot of sense because, one, each of those districts is located next to a major transportation mm -hmm. corridor. We don't have a transit station in Easton, but they're also within proximity. The furthest, I believe, is four miles, the um, Foundry Eastman, to the Mansfield transit station. So each one of those districts is less than four miles from, from a transit station, mm -hmm. from a commuter rail. And, and commercial areas but close by. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're all, yes. already also areas that we had already kind of identified for growth, right? Either through, yes. yeah, yeah. even though yeah. Washington North was kind of back when we thought the train was coming through sometime in the reasonable, yeah. the foreseeable future. But at the same time, it is, but yeah. There's a logic yeah. to it, but yeah. the, that, that one to me mm -hmm. seems mostly just to kind of spread, mm -hmm. to spread it out. Yes. So correct. it's yep, not yep, all located. But, I mean, it all looks good, looks good right. to me. Okay. Okay, to me, but I have a question. Uh, do you know if other towns that also have proposed different areas mm -hmm. like we are proposing, like three or four yes. areas? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. In fact, Lexington proposed many, mm -hmm. many. Oh, they just did a bunch of small <laughs> right, yeah. Like all five acres and, or something? And they had been working on this. They had so they have had 125, history. right? Oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. yeah so they're... Um, Yes, there are other yeah, towns because that have multiple uh, districts. We have this, that the town needs to approve it, but yeah. also the state needs mm -hmm. to approve it. Well, the state's already looking. I mean, that's like Stephanie said, the well, state is already reviewing our draft, so we know we're on the right track. We just have to right. yeah, keep just, tweak a couple yeah, things. Yeah. Yes. All right, so, based, so this is, so this 1393 is based on what we just looked at on the maps, right? Yes. Okay, so you can definitely take out the, the Western uh, warehouse Struck, um, what? I hadn't taken it out yet. Oh, but you can now, right? Yeah, okay. So you're going to. So we can Is that numbers. what the board... Does anyone have a problem removing it? That's what we talked with Foundry Street about at the, at the VFW, too. So then Foundry gets reduced to what? And I, I think, yeah. You, you could, you, one of them needs to be more than... Three. Well, it sounds like Washington North is now like the main one. Mm -hmm. Well, foundry goes. Uh, yep. We have the twenty. Yeah, if you're so let's go back to the mm -hmm. the well, spreadsheet. Well, foundry includes Avalon still, but yeah. So Avalon and the so uh, Washington the North would be your twenty-five contiguous acres mm -hmm. if you take out. I think mm -hmm. yeah, if you take out the. Yeah, yeah. Just how it's gone. I mean, the, the people there have some good good points. Is that the Washington North is um, excluding the conservation land and all of that land that can't be developed there, um, and it's still 33? Like you're only talking about the stuff that can be developed over there. Um, you mean the you mean the, the conservation land being the area in the back? Yeah. So like there's some stuff back there that can't be developed. Correct? Is that included? Mickey, in the Mickey you're, you're, so the answer to your question, or what you're asking, the total acreage mm -hmm. doesn't have to extract out. The restricted areas. Your mm -hmm. calculation does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. So any like storm water or even yeah, yeah. with that removed, mm -hmm. we calculated mm -hmm. that um, it could support 17 units per acre. Mm -hmm. Okay, that yeah. was my question. Is just because when you look between Washington Belmont at 288 and Washington North at 490, it's a significant difference with mm -hmm. not a lot of difference. Oh, in, in, in the units, yeah. right? Yeah, that's probably because it's yeah. excluding that whole back area that's either some sort of, either stormwater or, or wetland or yeah. some or conservation. Right. So foundry, foundry without the warehouse, what it is? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have that. We didn't Approximately. That. We, mm -hmm. You don't know that. Is that, I, I know a, what the is that two, three I acres? Large. I don't know what it's the large. Mm -hmm. Large. Large. Oh. It is. So yeah. if you, Five acres? I can look, we can look that up. We can go mm -hmm. right to the town square. Page. 
looks big because it has this it wedge going yes. all the way to the back. <laughs> what a shame if we pull all that out of there. But. Yeah, even that back wedge, I guess that was the same area that Stephanie was talking about. They might have some wetlands, so who knows if that <laughs> has wetlands as well. I'm there. sorry, which one? You, oh, you, oh, you, you can keep that yeah. and take cover. Okay, the so Western you, Warehouse. You, Right. <laughs> you want me to look up what the acreage is, right? On... It's about uh, two thirds of Avalon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? In a very vocal minority that shows up to these things. Yeah. And, yeah, but. Yes. So, you, hey, you want to keep it? Why, we can, we municipal. Can, well, yeah, we can try to I keep mean, look, it then, you, uh, you, guys, you guys have been at these meetings and you've been yeah, getting the hard, doing the hard work of the too. feedback. Yeah, it's so. It creates a weird little finger again, though, connecting mm -hmm. the two if you take out that warehouse. No, I know it. Yeah. Odd little, mm -hmm. little well, actually, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. So, Is it adjacent? do we have the 25 contiguous without it? You get that yes, you do. Yep. North Washington. You wouldn't I, have well, it here. You would not have it here. I, I'm not, I think I'm not, well, to Mickey's point, okay, though, there is that, there is that break when you pull out the, what is it, the IBC? What is that yep. building over uh, on? Oh, Washington. Belmont? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, IBC. IBC? Oh, no, IBC, right, IBC. Yeah, yeah. You get a break this there. Mm -hmm. a very small finger, like, yeah, if you, a foundry. Right. Yeah, yeah. you're, you're correct. Mm -hmm. You are correct, but if you have all three districts, then you have. Um, well, the question, Stephanie, is 33 with or without the condos? It's without. It's without. 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 That, those are the numbers. It's 33 without the condos. Mm -hmm. You may have Washington, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's so that's so you got it. That's yeah. the answer. Okay. To all right. You, that's what you. I see. That's what okay. you asked. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So you got it. There. Uh, uh, the other question was: This include wetlands and all kinds, of, and it doesn't matter as long as your calculation for units reflect that and that, yep. that number. That's, so that's I got it. Okay. The, the model, the mm -hmm. compliance model. So was there some interesting way up what size that, that lot was? Did you hear that? Yeah, I was trying. I, the website's not cooperating with me. I can try. I just got a message. No. Oh. Well, I can do my phone. Hopefully, you have internet, otherwise, we won't. <laughs> and we still have Joanne, so yeah. we have something. Sorry. Mm. Not that we just still have you, Joanne. We appreciate you. Yeah, she's on. <laughs> she's on. <laughs> Can you find that in uh, Google Maps? Yeah, just go to Eastern, uh, can you go to the Eastern Property View, it's just my internet's. That's what I'm trying to go right to, so. What's the address? I just search Eastern MA Property Viewer, and that usually goes right there. Right. Stephanie, I pulled it up on my end. Okay. Do you have it? Thanks, Joanne. Yeah. Do you want to see the map or just the property card or do you want the number? The property card for the, the square footage of the lot. Yeah. Hold and on. Can I share my screen? I should be able to. I think it's generally in square feet. It's not letting me share my screen? No, it's I'm sharing. For some reason, no, because I'm on. But can you just read the square footage? Yeah. Um, hold on, let me find it. 
All right. And it does show some, a, sm a few small, like maybe blue wetland type things towards the rear of that one, too. So that, it doesn't matter. That's the, the Oh, no, I, I'm done. I'm just saying that we are. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. the floodplain. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm ready. Yeah, it says parcel, to parcel total land area is 11.8. Oh, 11.8 acres. Okay. Mm -hmm. We added. We, ha we yeah. are over 25. Yeah, so it's called 35 Eastman Street is that parcel, yeah. right? Okay. So that's, that reduces to uh, mm -hmm. 30. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, 29.8. Mm -hmm. Well, the public, has, <laughs> the public has spoken, and they have requested um, reduction of what MBTA do, zoning in this area. What does that do to the district yield of that area? Yeah. Oh, that's what is we're going to find out when, um, when we re rerun the, the numbers. Well, if you reduce uh, Avalon, you will be more drastic mm -hmm. and keep this one. Which one? Where? where? Swap. Oh, keep the warehouse mm -hmm. and take Avalon out. Oh. Which you could do as well. I'm pretty sure I did. I think Mickey it, made the point that... It's know, more it's, probable that multifamily would be built under this at the warehouse than at Avalon. Right. Okay. Yeah, if, so, you, if you want to really... So if you are a resident trying to re that, keep the traffic kind of at a limit in that area, you probably want to eliminate the yeah. warehouse, not Avalon. Right, because that have a different yeah. entrance to yeah. it. Yep. It's, it's a vocal minority basically trying to mm -hmm. defeat the entire purpose of the statute, which, you know, if we are going to get it passed and... The public has spoken, so be it. But it's not, from a planning perspective, this is not the best. Mm -hmm. Well, neither was MBTA zoning in the first place, right? We're just, we're, just, we're, we're meeting the statute. Um, usually we do things, you know, kind of our own way in town. Um, you know, the state had some ideas and they gave us a charge and we're fulfilling that mission. And, but one of the things I like mm -hmm. to say, and I, I said it at the meetings and people, again, people agree, is yes, the mm -hmm. state has mandated this. But it's also given communities, especially adjacent communities, I think mm -hmm. the MBTA communities where you have a transit station, it's a little mm -hmm. um, more difficult. But especially adjacent communities to define where you feel this makes the most sense mm -hmm. for your community. And you know the, the select board, the planning board, even the input from the residents, everybody's worked really hard to make sure that this fits in with the um, plans for housing in, in future growth it, in the uh, town. With the look into a good development in this area, you need to keep the warehouse and take Avalon out. I have to say that I disagree with that. I would prefer to see the warehouse left in, um, but that's just where I stand on it. And I'm, 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 not, I'm not so much for developing this area for this. You know me. I, I don't ma well, believe I'm sure that mandates from, from town meeting too, right? Yeah. But, not, uh, not everyone's going to have the same. Uh, not everyone's going to have the same thoughts at town meeting when they decide to, to vote for or against this. So <laughs> it's good that we <laughs> we're talking about it. I'd like to give the warehouse Stephanie. the cushion. I mean, mm -hmm. I like having a cushion. But I was just yeah. Okay, let, let's say let's go around here. Amos, why why would you prefer to? Uh, keep the warehouse. Uh, I, 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 what? I, I, I really I don't prefer anything. Okay, gotcha. I prefer this Monday to go away. But All right, I, yeah. I, it, gotcha. It's not going to happen. Okay. Uh, cool. All right, let's see if there's any public comment there. So, Dale, if you raise your hand. Yeah, oh, I thought, we, I thought you were going around the room. Oh, oh. Yes. oh. Ah, I guess. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this. Well, Taking the we, we, warehouse. I'm also abstained on that, so we'll. We'll move on to public comment. Um, I don't know if he's raised your hand. Can we go back to one sec? Are we keeping the warehouse set or not? I think if we were going around, I'd prefer to keep it. Uh, keep. Okay. Is it keep? Yeah. I'd prefer to keep it. It's, Bob? It's I mean, my preference would be to keep it. Keep. I mean, just because I think it's... Mm -hmm. It's a smart. It's smart right. from a planning perspective. Mm -hmm. This is a non-binding uh, discussion. Yeah, here, but yeah, All right. But I, I do mm -hmm. get the objections. Yeah. Amos, Amos, are you, are you keep the warehouse or remove the warehouse? Yeah, take it away. One, Joanne was uh, remove the warehouse, and so was I. So that's three. No, times. no, Joanne was keep the warehouse. Oh yeah, keep it. Oh, oh yeah, keep yeah, keep it in the map. Oh wait, okay. 
That is three for keeping the warehouse. So in that case, would you eliminate the fingers in the front, or would you not make? Or would you keep the the finger lots as well? Keep them. Keep them. Uh, for me, yeah. I mean, it, I agree. It just makes sense from a planning mm -hmm. perspective. If you're going to do it, just do it right. I agree with that. Here too. Figure, yeah. If you're going to do it and to promote um, as of right monthly family any, zoning and any uh, anyone right. for taking Avalon out of this. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a likelihood for that to ever be done. I mean, to be redeveloped. It's already there, so might as well it's just It's already it. densely yeah. populated. That's, that's, that's sort of part of the idea in some people's yeah. perspective. Um, you know, some, some people that are probably going to be at town meeting would rather see this not all happen in the next 10 years. I, th right? I think if you... So, again, so, yeah. I think it's not on the fly, but if you do that and you take out both Target mm -hmm. and Big Y, mm -hmm. I think your overall you Okay, well, yep. Well, anyways, the board wants to keep Enough the warehouse. Potential. So now, what about what about the lots in the front there? Now, this, the, the, all the skinny fingers. Do you want to keep those two or um, help uh, kind of work with the neighborhood group um, and remove those. I would like to keep them just from a planning perspective. Keep. I mean, okay. I just think it makes sense. Good. Hey, there's yeah. a keep. There's a keep. Almost. Almost. What do you think about those? Keep a, the small lots. I would say take them as much as you can. Okay. What? Get it as close as possible to the numbers. We okay. So that's that's you're with me there, right? And um, Joanne, you want to keep all those small lots in the front there, next to the 35 Eastman as well? Keep. Yeah. Keep. keep. Okay. Three, two again on the keep. All right. Um, do you, do anyone have an, an idea of what we could um, remove from the other zones to get a little bit closer to our target number? If we have one at this point? No. If I may, Chair, I'm just wondering what a comfortable cushion is from Stephanie's About point of view. A, a thousand? A thousand? Sorry, how much? I think a little more than a thousand. I, I think we need more than a thousand. Mm -hmm. To be comfortable. Uh, I, again, I, well, you can, yeah, right. Well, even after you run the numbers, right? Yeah. And as, especially if you, um, but but everyone just said keep target mm -hmm. and the warehouse in. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think if you play a lot with mm -hmm. this district, because yep. I think it probably has the least constraints. Oh, I think I think we're kind of done. I think that's I think that we're out of luck on this one. So uh, until we hear from the. We so we um, hear the, what we've been hearing the entire time. Um, all right, Stephanie, just, just for my own request, we'll just just remove the the, um, the marketplace from Belmont, just so I can see how it looks. We want that number. That's I guess the only other request that I would make, unless Amos has other ideas, uh, others to remove from any of the districts. Why do we want to remove more? You want to remove more? Of well, we're trying to get that. We're trying to go. We're at thirteen something. We're trying to get to around now a thousand fifty. Is I kind of like where we are. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm comfortable. I think the districts work mm -hmm. where they are. Leave it alone. Okay. All right. In terms of running the numbers, though, I think it would be useful to at least mess around with your idea, which is to take out Avalon. What would that look like? Yeah, just see. Just, just to see. see. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? I would like okay. to see that number. Okay. Let's see it. And we can do that. So, yep. Yep. Cool. Thanks. I think so, it kind of makes sense to take Avalon out of this. So, I just want to be I don't disagree with you. Oh, sorry. You guys, Stephanie, sorry. Have a question here. Yeah, I, I just want to be clear. So, take out Avalon in addition to the ones that we've already, the target and the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, so that. That will go to 25, almost, if not under. All right, is yeah, everyone ready for the overall? Because that, that warehouse is two thirds of Avalon. Yeah. And, and that's, the, that's where it starts getting tricky. We, again, we need to do that, but you, it's kind of like squeezing the balloon. Right. Yeah. 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 So 
so it'll be one model pulling out Avalon and then one pulling out the plaza over on Belmont. No, they forget about that. We just, uh, Avalon will get us close enough anyway. You think it'll get us down we'll to... Over, right? yeah, it's not squeezing the balloon, it's using a calculation to, yeah, 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 yeah. to calculate how you yes, perform Yes, it is. It's a real, but okay. yes, yeah. until you run the numbers. We won't know, exactly. Okay. Cool. All right, you guys all ready for the public here? Yes. All right. Any so public comment? Uh, you should be allowing them to speak. Okay. Not a panel. All right. Um, ask, ask to unmute. Yeah, hi. This is Dale Karras. Are you recognizing me now? Yes. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Yeah, Dale Karras, 21 South Street. Um, I strongly disagree with the characterization of being sort of a vocal minority. Our, our folks have been involved in this for a long time, and. For those folks who attended on January 25th, we had almost 30 folks there, and we sometimes have town meetings where you get a little over, you know, 100, and we're waiting for a quorum. And and you know, I've obviously been a, a very vocal voice in all of this, and frankly, I've been trying to you know work with the town and to enhance the likelihood that this actually gets approved. Um, there is a very substantial population in Easton who are concerned about you know number of apartments and everything. I'm frankly not one of those overall, um, but. Uh, I am very concerned about taking out the uh, the warehouse, uh, or I should say, suggest keeping in the warehouse and taking out Avalon. You substantially increase your likelihood that this thing gets passed at town meeting. If you keep Avalon in, it's about 22 acres, and they're not likely to redevelop it. And when you're talking about it from a planning perspective, the folks in this area are, it's saturated here with traffic. All of those folks, all those additional units you're talking about looking good from a planning perspective, the only way they get into town is on 106. And these people cannot get out from gaslight. They cannot get out from lamplighter. And that's how your daily you know, commute goes. You have a five or 10 minute wait trying to get out. And I would add also on the traffic issues, the um, there was some data that was Stephanie had uh, prepared and provided at the January 25th meeting. And even looking at those average traffic counts over time, it showed those um, increasing by about a couple of thousand per day after Avalon went in in 2017 and 2018. I looked at some traffic data also. There was a traffic study done in 2009 that showed that there was approximately um, 9,000 cars per 10,000 cars per day. And there was one done in 2019 that showed 24,000 cars per day in this area. You know, you can address everything you want from the planning perspective. I really think you're going to run a risk that that's going to be put up at town meeting and it's going to get voted down. Um, there's a lot of folks who are concerned about it. So I'm encouraging the board to um, take, uh, uh, take out the warehouse and keep Avalon in. I, I think you substantially increase the likelihood all of this gets approved town meeting. And keep in mind, again, I voted in favor and spoke in favor of town meeting of multifamily housing, increasing density in that area back two or three years ago and also in the Five Corners area. I'm not an anti-apartment person. So I, I'd ask the board to, to give further thought to that issue yep. for that reason. So, uh, yeah, and you know, it just might turn out if that's the case um, that we'll, if we have another chance at fall town meeting that um, that's... That's the yep. risk that we have to take, um, depending on uh, exactly what direction we go in here. All right. Anyone else? Cool. All right. Um, I think we're going to look at removing Avalon um, in addition to what you already had on outlined on the map, and that will be it. Mm -hmm. So I'll send that around to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, Wayne. Wayne's been running the model. Yep. And he is out on bereavement for the mm -hmm. week, so Monday maybe is that. Okay. Or oh. it might be sooner. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so with that behind us, we can start um, looking at and making any final changes to any up to the actual zoning bylaw itself. Um, maybe can we distribute that for the for the next meeting? And cool. um, the I, I have that. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about it now? To just show okay. what those yeah, are sure. quickly, and then yes, if everyone would take a look. Mm -hmm.
So one of the things in the original um, draft versions, we just indicated like X extra numbers for the uh, percent of affordable units and the AMI. We did receive, um, and I had informed the board that we contracted with someone to do the feasible, the um, financial fiscal feasible. analysis to determine if we could potentially um, request a higher number, if that was going to be economically feasible for developers. They came back and they said no, based on the way the districts are configured, um, that 10% was the maximum that we could and have it be economic. So I've updated that. Um, so now we reflect the 10% within the draft bylaw. Um, one of the things that we discussed was the density bonus, adding additional stories. I had up to five, and then I added in total, including the first floor, just to be clear on that. Uh, and that, again, that was a density bonus. You get more units if, if you um, had mixed use, whether it was a first floor commercial or it was a separate building that was commercial. And this is what I added today in section 17 of special regulations. Again, you can't restrict um, the way that because of the density bonus, and we've also written that you can have multiple buildings on a lot. Section 17 restricted that um, except as was allowed in one of the other sections of the bylaw. You could only have one building, so what we've done is accept that there may be two or more buildings on a lot subject to the provisions of 235.40, which is the section of the code that we're proposing we change. So that would not um, restrict this. Given that um, we've kind of a uh... I guess maintain most of um, a good part, portion of Foundry and some of the other zones. Can can we like make like a, a farther setback for the taller building allowance along along Foundry? Yeah. Does anyone have a problem with that? No. It will affect the numbers. Um, this is a density bonus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'll get you. And uh, so it's mm -hmm. anything. So it's like the like, fourth floor. Or above. So like so, so any buildings that height would be like fifty feet yeah. off the road. Fifty is not that far. Do you, like say say on the so warehouse lot. So the set. Oh, you mean the yeah. The set, the, like the yeah, setback, yeah. Not the fourth. Not so the fourth if fourth someone wanted to build the, the big, the tallest building, say on yeah, thirty five feet, that we just talked about, it would be fifty area. feet from the road. Reduce the area, no? It would. Mm -hmm. It would fifty feet. Um, what do we have now? Mm -hmm. Why fifty? Because we have, let's go. Let's go to that. How much is a setback now? I'm 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 looking for that. That so is mixed thirty. So mixed-use residential. Oh, thirty. We have thirty. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five, not thirty. Yeah. See that? That's just so that's that's, it, that's twenty-five. If it's strictly residential mm -hmm. that they're building. They're oh, mixed-use mixed is only fifteen. Use, the setback, the front setback was 15 feet. At least some of like the, you know, um, what we've heard from different, um, some people is that, you know, people just don't want to have that, that city look when you drive up and you see like a big building right there. I mean, I don't, at least setting it back might um, uh, alleviate some of that. That the pres you know, the kind of the, the presence that you'd see there. Oh, Dale, are you trying to talk? Can you? No. Oh, okay. You, you should be able to put. Yeah. Um, that, that's just because he's a yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just saw that. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. We had, we had a pause in the. You know, okay, this, no, normally. There, was a, there was a pause in our talk speaking, so, so I forgot to ask. But, the, but there, is, there is a logic for the mixed use to be closer to the uh, mm -hmm. businesses. Yeah. Business because it's also a walk neighborhood. Right, so, but I we have to run the numbers mm -hmm. to see yeah. if changing. Mm -hmm. I what we need to do is run it alone with the. Yeah. But you know what? I don't think we've been running them with the 
that we haven't even ran it with that it. density bonus. Okay. Because it would be some commercial anyways, right? Yeah, so, okay, I don't know if it makes now, it too complicated, now, then I want Now your 1,300 will go to 1,000. <laughs> it, it might, yeah. Or, or, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's too complicated. Will, yeah. will, will this? Really, uh, you know, when Wayne gets back, we'll, we'll, see, okay, yeah. we'll see if, so, um, what we could try Can you optimize is changing that? it, like, mm -hmm. we'll do 15 feet, we'll, we'll move it. Mm -hmm. 20. To 20, then and we'll move it to 25. 30, yeah. Okay, so we'll do incrementally yeah. and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. We're not trying to squeeze a balloon. We're just trying to plan it for based no, on input we've received from, yeah. from people, right? And people don't want to see a big, tall building right at the When the I say squeeze the balloon, so, it's when you do it yeah. without, no, I know, without I'm running the I'm model. Joking. It's okay. I'm joking about it. Yeah. Funny. You know, you mm hmm Yes. Took this out. Okay, so we'll also do that. But did I, was that okay for time for me to interject there, or did you have to go back to what you're looking at on the affordable part? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, no, we were done yeah, with the yeah, affordable, so. and then mm -hmm. I think that was really it. The, the front, uh, again, mm -hmm. just uh, allowing more than one building. Those were the only changes. So um, I have a note. Suzanne will PDF this tomorrow and upload it to the website. So that's uploaded. And we'll need to get the... The, the public have the access districts. to this? The public have access to this document? Mm -hmm. Oh, to the website? Yes. To the do do this? Yeah, we have all these documents around okay. on the website. We, yes. we have a pretty robust. Yeah, so let's spend a little more, try to spend a decent amount of time next time at the meeting on this one, right? Because just well, we look, look at it, the, because we, have, we, we haven't spent a lot of time, as much time as we on would the, on this, right? Yeah. On the I feel like, yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay. We will do that. And, but those were the only changes that we got from the state? Yeah. Oh wow. Of course, they had a they have a caveat that just because yeah right these sure. are their comments and yeah. they make oh. changes. Yeah, but, they, but they we also don't, don't expect us compliance. to. We also so. pulled it from one day. That was, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, true. Yeah, so. Again, we that's really true. It probably should have. Mimic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Except yeah. for the districts, which of mm -hmm. course are unique to Easton, we mimic what Lexington, Lexington had in yeah. the yeah. county. So, mm -hmm. uh, and they they are approved. That's also a credit to you and to Wayne and to Peter as the chair. Thank you all for doing this and putting together such a good document that it got through with such minor changes, though, too. So thank you. Well, you're, you're all there, too. All right. Um, you guys have anything else on MBTA zoning? Do any members of the public have any comments on what we just discussed? No? Okay. Do um, we have to continue that one? Oh, uh, yeah, let's, let's continue that to the uh, 27th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second, Stetson. Okay. Um, all in favor? Wolf? Aye. Stetson? Aye. Tatum? Aye. Sigmund? Aye. And Deshane? Aye. All right. Um, next is meeting minutes from January 24th. Um, has everyone had a chance to review those? Are there any changes? I, I read it. Everything looks OK to me. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve minutes. Second. OK. Um, all in favor, Kadem? Aye. Zygmunt? Aye. Stetson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. OK, that passes too. Um, chair report? Nope, I don't um, have. Nothing big for the chair report besides we've just been working on the MBTA zoning. Uh, Stephanie, do you have any, any updates? I think we have five mm -hmm. municipal board meetings. Mm -hmm. for that. We have to be talking, um, once the board does its final vote, we schedule it for March 12th in order just to have everything in place for warrant and the various groups by. Um, and the select board, um, we need to do that. But we'll want to have at least one other public session, information session. I was thinking um, and suggested to Peter, maybe we do it like an open house format with poster boards over a period of time where people drop in and we can just explain. I think there are probably a lot of people out there that still aren't going to be aware before we get to town meeting of what the zoning is and what it isn't, and it's really important that, um, especially after we wrap up all the municipal board <laughs> meetings, um, that we don't just 
what people kind of forget until we get to town meeting. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and we'll have the map pretty much there. Yes. The yeah. map will have been decided upon at that point. So we actually might be ready to, to make a, have a vote at the next meeting, but we have until the following meeting as far as the timeline is concerned. Yes. Yeah, right. the, the, yeah, so I would actually, the way we um, posted the schedule was that the board would pretty much finalize mm -hmm. the district, the proposed districts tonight, mm -hmm. and then at the meeting on the 27th, mm -hmm. um, it would be final comments from the public, mm -hmm. and then the board could close and deliberate on March 12th. Yeah, so that's kind of sort of what it's talked about. Yeah, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. All right. That's it, I suppose, um, unless anyone else has anything to bring up. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, Stetson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Tatum? Aye. Ligament? Aye. And Deshane, aye. That's it. Aye.